George Barr was a very interesting man. He was a, a lawyer in the city, uh, quite a high profile lawyer. He had argued cases before the Privy Council in London. And he had a sort of a bee in his bonnet. Uh, he felt very strongly that uh, Regina College should extend its offerings from just the first year to the full three years of a, of a BA. At that time, a BA degree took three years. And at the time, he wasn't really a very popular figure. At first, he was a voice in the wilderness. The, the sort of establishment families in Regina were not really of the view that this was the time for uh, a full university degree. Some of the more prosperous families could well afford to send their children to university outside of Regina, maybe University of Toronto, University of Manitoba, perhaps University of Saskatchewan. So that wasn't really an issue for the very wealthiest people in the city. But Barr was more concerned with sort of the average family. And it was partly his life story because he came from a poor background himself. He was from a farm in Ontario. He had a marvelous teacher in the country school. And he credited all the success he had in life to that educational opportunity. He said he wouldn't be arguing cases before the Privy Council in London if he hadn't had that good educational start. He and his wife were very involved in the community. They were in every organization that was going. They were totally committed to uh, the culture and the social and development of Regina society. He was involved in all kinds of organizations, a real community-minded man. And so he saw this as an extension of that, the, the, the development of higher education in Regina. And he just thought it was a scandal that so many young people of ability were not going to university because they could, their families couldn't afford it. And actually, if you look at the statistics, they bear him out because the university participation rate for Saskatchewan was well below the national average in the 1950s. The, the, on the average in Canada, 7.2% of high school graduates went on to university. In Saskatchewan, it was only 4.1%. So Barr said that part of this was because of the structure of the university system. Remember, Regina was still the larger city. Regina had about 83,000 people in, 19, in the mid-50s. Saskatoon had about 66,000. So his whole argument was focused on this opportunities for youth theme that he developed. And he got allies along the way. Uh, uh, Father Athel Murray, the president at Notre Dame College in Wilcox, was very much of the same view. And he, he basically said, shame on the province for not giving more opportunities for young people to advance their education. And at that time, Ross Thatcher, who's later premier, he was uh, a member of parliament for the CCF, in Moose Jaw, he was an advocate of a full degree program in Regina. So gradually as, as George Barr kept beating this drum, more and more people came to his side. So it actually was not from within the university, not within the college, that the campaign originated. It was from the community itself. And what he did, what Barr did, was he persuaded the mayor to hold a public meeting at City Hall. About 150 people attended, and they formed the Regina College Citizens Committee. And they had representatives from the Trades and Labor Council, from the Chamber of Commerce, from the Home and Schools Association, from the Royal Canadian Legion, a broad-based coalition of citizens who were all saying increasingly loudly by the late 1950s that the time had come for university expansion in Regina. Like maybe you could argue in 1911 that the province couldn't afford two universities. But the time had come with the baby boomers especially, starting to be of an age where they needed a university education, that the demographic pressures were strong. So I see George Barr as a kind of a, an interesting character because it's, it's interesting when somebody speaks out and says what other people don't yet believe, but eventually 
they are persuaded of the view. And I just like his sort of eccentricity, his, his orneriness, that he kept on talking about this. But people were saying, oh, just please be quiet about that. We don't want to deal with that right now. But he was just so persistent and so sort of in your face. And he was an old man by this time, too. He was well into his 70s when he started this. Perhaps he felt, well, I have nothing to lose. I don't care what people say about me. Uh, you know, rocking the boat a little bit. But uh, any, anyway, when the decision was made in 1959 by the University of Saskatchewan to, to establish a full degree program in Regina, there was a big editorial in the Regina Leader that said, Regina rejoices at the news, and we give credit to George Barr. <laughs> and he even, they even said something like, uh, and his wife Ethel, because they held the torch, they said, in the darkest hours, you know, as though they'd been with him all the time. But he actually, he was the one that was persisting in calling this a major issue that had to be dealt with. <laughs> 